This video is part one of a three-part series on producing these faceted wood desk clocks. I'm producing a total of 15 of these desk clocks for this project. Each one is different and unique. I use a variety of woods for this project. Some are solid, others have laminate insert. I use a variety of angle patterns with 10, 12, 14, and 16 facet patterns. In part one of this video, we'll describe the systems that are used, used to produce these faceted desk clocks. We'll describe in detail the cutting of the facets on wood blocks on a bandsaw using the AccuSlice system and the AccuFacet system to achieve the desired shapes. As a final step, we'll just demonstrate a custom-made jig to hold these facet wood blocks that we use to drill the holes for the clock inserts. In part two of this video series, we'll describe the finishing of these faceted wood desk clocks. We begin by first of all sanding the facets on a disc sander, followed by hand sanding with some custom made sanding sticks, and then sanding with 320 grit sanding paper with a sanding mop. Finally, we'll finish these clocks by first of all sealing the wood with some bush oil, followed by several coats of polyurethane finish, and then buffing. And as a final step, we insert the clock inserts to finish the faceted wood desk clocks. In part three of this video series, we'll show all 15 of the completed facet wood desk clocks. We'll have pictures of each of these desk clocks. In addition, we'll put each of these desk, desk clocks on a rotating platform and you have a video showing all sides of the faceted wood desk clocks. We'll also have a description of each of the facet wood desk clocks, including the woods that were used to produce the wood block and the angle patterns that were used to create the facet patterns. In order to produce these facet wood desk clocks, a number of products are needed, beginning with the AccuSlice system with a three-foot rail, the AccuSled system, and then the AccuFacet system with the L-bracket support plate, pattern disc, and the safety shields, and also uh, the uh, AccuPath laser beam. It's probably another good addition that enables you to see exactly where you'll be cutting with your bandsaw. You also might want to consider an additional vacuum system to collect the excess sawdust that's created on top of the bandsaw. Okay, we're ready to get started, but before we begin, we have to get the AccuSlice system and sled set up. I've installed my AccuSlice uh, index table with a three-foot rail, and the first thing I need to do is to clean my channel and the uh, roller bearings on my sled. And this should be done after every um, project you run. Every time I run one of my projects, I, I clean the, the rail and the, the roller bearings. And I do this by taking a, just a dry rag and running it through the channel on this front edge of the channel just to get the sawdust out. And then on the bearings, on the front bearings that rise on this front rail, you get a lot of embedded sawdust. You can probably can see it embedded in there. And that's what tightens it up and gives you a rough you know, movement of your sled or your carriages. So you just take a damp cloth or a dry, even a dry cloth, you just wipe off that sawdust. And it's mainly these two front roller guides. And if the uh, paper towel's not enough, then I'd use, you know, like a steel wool pad to clean them off. But it should come off pretty easily. If you don't take that off soon enough, eventually it's going to embed it into the plastic and you get, you know, deep grooves in your plastic wheels. So I clean those after every job. And then once that's done, you just slide on the carriage you know, quite smoothly and easily. I'm using two different blades for this faceted desk clock project. I've been using a 10 tooth per inch half inch wide blade, and I'm also using a 14 teeth per inch half inch wide blade. Uh, the 14 teeth per inch blade will give me a smoother cut, but it'll gum up faster. So the, the 10 teeth per inch blade is probably the preferable blade, but I'm going to be trying some. Uh, of these desk clocks with the 14 teeth per inch blade just to see if I do get a smoother cut. Next thing you gotta make sure is that blade is perfectly perpendicular to your Accu sled table. It's not critical that the blade is parallel to or perpendicular to your table on your bandsaw, but the blade has to be perpendicular to the table of your of your sled. So I move my sled close to my bandsaw blade and then just take a machine of square and make sure it's perfectly perpendicular. And if necessary, adjust the table, you know, angle to get it accurate. And then make sure it's locked in place and locked tight. I began the production of these faceted uh, desk clocks 
by starting with a, a block of wood between four and, and six inches cube. And I usually take this block and I make a round disc from this. And this is required because these corners will hit this AccuSlit table that's being rotated on the AccuFacet system. Once that disc has been cut, I have my center marked on my wood block. I would then attach my pattern disc, attach that with some screws, and then put this on the uh, AccuFacet system and cut the facets. After the facets have been cut, they'd be taken to the sander, sand it smooth, and as a final step, we cut out an insert for the desk clock to finish the project. I have a small bandsaw here I use for various other operations. And on this uh, bandsaw, I have a quarter inch by 18 per inch blade, and I'll just be cutting out this circular disc from this square block. I'm cutting just outside the line that I drew on the board. It's not that critical. But the main purpose is just to cut the corners off so that the block clears the AccuSlid table when I mount it on the AccuFacet system. This is the collection of the wood blocks I'll be using to make these faceted wood desk clocks. I'm using a variety of different woods. Uh, woods such as, you know, walnut, I have some maple, some uh, cedar, some yellow heart, and even some pieces here with some laminated pieces in the middle. So we'll see how those come out. The process begins by, first of all, attaching my pattern disc. In this case, my pattern disc has 12 positions. As I mentioned in my previous video, I marked every second position on my index uh, disc because that will be enable me to cut my facets at alternating positions. So I said I'll begin by attaching these. They pre-drill my holes for my screws, and I normally use four screws on these. On the anti-facet system, you can cut various angles, uh, from uh, 0 degrees up to 90 degrees, but actually you can cut up to 120 degrees on the system. And these different degree angles are required to create these different facets on the system. So I've been playing with uh, different facet patterns that I like to create these desk clocks. And these correspond to the degree angles of the various facet cuts. And going to, in this case, up to uh, seven facets for this larger block, and on this smaller one, just five uh, facet angles. These first two, this top angle is zero degrees, so you have a flat surface on the very top of the disc. For these remaining uh, four samples, you have a, a pyramid, or in this case a six-sided six star on top of the a piece, which makes a nicer pattern. So I tend to like these star patterns on the top better. So these are just some of the different examples. Uh, this with seven segments is actually good for a very large block of wood. That worked pretty well, as, as well as this, but the, with a flat top. Uh, but my preference is probably these two, this one here and this one here. And these have the star pattern on the top. The main difference, this is angle is 10 degrees, where this angle on the top star is 20 degrees. It's a little more pronounced, a little bit easier to see, this 20 degree top uh, star pattern. So I'm all set to mount my disc on the AccuFacet system, and I have my safety shields all set up, and my uh, L-bracket support jig mounted in the 90 degree position. And I do like to cut the outer facets first, the 90 degree facets, just to give me a square round piece that I know exactly where everything's going to line up. So I have my pattern disc already mounted on. I insert this in the top hole. And I like using a washer. I find a washer makes it easier to uh, turn the piece. So the procedure is to pull the pin out and rotate it. And it should click in position every time you should go around the disc. So my first cut is just to uh, give me my 12 sides. So I release my uh, mag jigs and my course adjustment knobs on the Accu slice table. And I make my first cut, estimate where it's going to be that I'm going to cut all 12 sides. I don't cut too much wood off, but I don't uh, make sure I cut enough off. I always always go back and cut more off. So tighten my course adjustment knobs, tighten my mag jig clamps on the Accu slice table, making sure my brass thumb screws are tight, making sure my black knob is tight and engaged in the position. And now we're ready to start cutting our first 90 degree facets. 
For this project, I'm cutting all 12 of the angles. I'm not skipping any of the index positions on the pattern disc. I don't always do this. On some of the other projects I'm working on, I'll skip a step on the index position, and therefore I only get six angles. Okay, that completes our 12 cuts. And there's our 12 sided cylinder as a starting point. So now we're ready to do the first cut. And I'm going to be doing a, a 10 degree cut on the surface. This is a, my block of uh, mahogany. So I'll be doing a 10 uh, degree cut. And I've got to make sure I go past center a little bit. I want to make sure I you know, get a perfect point on this on the top. So now this back in the same position. So I release my one thumb screw and I set my angle to 10 degrees. In fact, it's still not far enough back, so I actually have to move this over this way two inches, which I can use any of these holes in the AccuSlice plate to do that. So, since everything's on two inch centers, so I'll move this back two inches and just remount it. And go and go on my 10 degree cut. So I have to move my table now such that the blade cuts on, on the right side of the board, so I make sure I get 100% cut off. Okay, I, don't have to go, I don't have to go all the way to the end, but, but I want to go, you know, I don't want to go on this side, so I can go somewhere between the middle and here to actually start my cut. I normally use the AccuPath laser to visualize where I'm going to make my cuts. Notice that I'm making these cuts, I'm cutting every second index position on a pattern disc. This will give me six facets on the surface. Okay, when I was cutting that, I cut every second step on my index, on my uh, pattern disc. That's why I had those marks on my pattern disc. So I was skipping a step. So instead of 12 cuts like I did here, I only did six cuts. And you can see the star-shaped uh, pattern when you get here. Let me... And there's, there's, our, there's our six pieces going to them. So my next cut is going to be uh, a 30-degree cut. And I want to cut, you know, not on the same plane as this, but on a plane across this, this rib here. And probably about uh, a third of the way in. So the first thing I do is I change my angle to 30 degrees. That was the plane of my previous cut. So I'm going to rotate this one position and lock it in place. And I'm going to set that blade that it cuts about a third of the way in. You can kind of see that on my prototype here. This is my, my six-sided six star. So this next cut is cut at an angle and uh, about a third of the way in uh, for that facet. Here you can see the importance of those safety shields. Pulling the safety shield back behind the, the front of the bandsaw blade. And you see my hands there turning the piece of wood, but it's behind the safety shield, so it's not near the bandsaw blade. So here's that second cut. And again, I cut six, six positions. And there's our center star position. I probably cut a little too much off on that. I probably should have cut it a little bit further. So next I'm going to go and cut again at the same angle I cut in the first cut, again about a, about a third of the way down. So again I change my angle now to the next cut is 50 degrees. And lock everything in place. And once again I have to reposition the table. So again I rotate this one position over. You can notice the laser beam uh, projecting exactly where I'll be cutting on each of the cuts. That completes that cut. So again, I can remove this so we can see it a little better. So I got one, two, three. 
Now this next one is actually an important facet because this is my 70 degree facet. And this is the facet that's going to rest on the table to give me my, you know, slight angle. Instead of being at 90 degrees on the table, it's going to be at, you know, 70 degrees. So that, I like to be that, that surface to be fairly large, you know, larger than this surface here. So again, I change my angle now to 70 degrees. And I'm probably going to reposition this block back to the previous position on the index table. I'm going to cut pretty close to the slip. So once again, I gotta rotate this one position. I can see with my laser being where I'm gonna cut. So I, I kind of judge the size of that facet. Okay, that completes the 70 degree facet. So what I have here is my 10 degree, 30, 50, 70 degrees, my largest facet, and that's going to enable this to set on the table, you know, at a, you know, 20 degree angle. And I have my 90 degree facet, and the last one I'm going to do is actually going to be 110 degree, and so it's going to enable this to tape, tape, taper inward to give a nicer, you know, um, face on the clock. So instead of having this big face, I have a little bit smaller face, uh, but. You know, my normal uh, AccuFast plate, it goes from 0 to 90 degrees. So how do I get, you know, more than 90 degrees? So let me move the camera around and I'll show you how we manage to do that. So when I cut my 90 degree uh, angle, I put my screw in this 90 degree position. That gives me 90 degree. But now I want to go beyond 90 degrees and there's no more space here to do that. But I can go out here to this space. And actually I have to move this over one, one position because that screw hole is being used already. So like I said, that was my 90 degree. So I want to move it over so I can use, I can use these positions. So there's my 110 degree position right there. So that gives me a cut all the way into here. So it'll give me a, a 20 degree taper from my 90 degrees. For this project, I'm cutting all 12 angles, as I did for the 90 degree cut. For many other projects I'll be working on, I'll be skipping an index position and only produce 6 angles. And that completes all the facets on that disc. And my uh, 70 degree facet here enables this to sit on the table, and it gives me this nice not quite perpendicular cut, so you can easily view your, your clock when it's done. The next process is to drill these inserts in these faceted blocks to enable me to attach my clock mechanism. I have two different sizes of clock mechanisms. I have one that's two and a half inches in diameter, and this one is a larger one that has a three and a quarter inch diameter for larger uh, blocks. So these small blocks take the, uh, the small one, and these just slide in this insert. They have a rubber gasket here that just friction holds the insert in place. It's that simple to, to insert, and it's, of course it's battery powered. So the next step I said is to drill these inserts, but I need a way to hold these, because these things obviously you know, aren't very stable to hold like this and try and drill on the uh, drill press. So I made a jig, and this jig consists of, first of all, is a 10 inch square piece of MDF with these Standoffs. These are four inch standoffs, quarter, uh, 20 thread per inch inserts, and they're screwed into the base of this block. And I made this uh, insert. It has some about, about a five inch diameter piece of uh, poplar, and it's welded out in the center. But I can put my faceted block in there to hold it in place. Now it's important that this thing must be square. It can't be tilted one way, it has to be perfectly square. So the way I do that, I made a ring. This is a ring with an opening for the drill hole I'm going to drill in it, and then holes for these screws that will screw into those aluminum blocks. Now what I did is I made my table here perfectly level, so it's level this way and this way. And so to keep this thing perfectly square, my table's level, this will be level, so I can get it perfectly aligned. And 
that jig is just to hold it while I drill the, the center hole. So it's ready to go to drill press now and, and drill the center hole. And I have this jig set up that uh, when it's aligned with the center of my hole, this fence keeps this from rocking, so it keeps it from you know rotating as I'm cutting it. So I have my center hole marked, you know, in my piece, and just make sure it aligns with this forceful bit as I insert it. So I'm all set there now. I'm ready to start drilling, and this is a three and a quarter inch diameter forceful bit, and I want to drill a hole a little bit over an inch, an inch deep, probably an inch and a quarter deep. And there's our perfect drilled hole. And then I can go and insert my clock. Part two of this video series will describe the sanding and finishing of this faceted desk clock. For this next faceted desk clock, I'm doing things a little bit different. I'm going to be using, not using a 90 degree cut on my piece at all. I'm going to be using a 20, 40, 60, 80, 110, and 120. So I'll get two bevels on the front edge. So it'll be a little bit different. Uh, I want my 80 degree cut to be my angle cut. that will rest on the table, so that one's a little bit wider. So I kind of mark the width of my various facets. They're about 0.65 inches apart with the center one where the uh, it's going to rest on the desk clock at 80 degrees will be uh, a little over an inch wide. And the two front bevels each be about you know half an inch wide. So I have those marked on here. Uh, so a little bit different. And I'll try to use the laser beam to line these positions up. So we'll see how that works out. Another thing I'll be doing, I'm uh, cutting using a disc that's 16 positions. So I'll be doing eight facets on each side. I won't be using 16 at all, I'll be using 8, skipping a step in between. So I'm using these index positions, I'm going to put them over here at 90 degrees so I can use my laser beam. So I'm turning on my laser beam which rides perfectly uh, down the teeth of the blade and projects the beam out and I'll try and get that to come out to my marks on the side of the board. So I position my cut and that laser beam, like I said, is going right down and it's going right at the edge of that first mark on the board. I'm speeding up this entire section on cutting the facets to reduce your viewing time. The procedures are much the same as a previous desk clock, except that I'm only cutting eight sides to each of the layers by skipping an index position on the pattern disc for each of the angles. I just finished cutting the eight 20 degree facets. Then I change the angle on the L-bracket carriage to 40 degrees, rotate the pattern disc by one position, and proceeded to cut the eight 40 degree facets. This video is sped up for viewing purposes, but in reality, the slower you cut, the smoother the cut and less saw marks in your boards. I next changed the angle on the L-bracket carriage to 60 degrees, rotated the pattern disc by one position, moved the AccuSlice table, and proceeded to cut the eight 60 degree angles. For the 80 degree angle cuts, I once again move the L bracket carriage to the outer two positions on the Accu sled. I change the angle to 80 degrees, rotate the pattern disc by one increment, and proceeded to cut the eight 80 degree facets. This is a larger facet that will be used as the base of the clock. The next angle cut is 100 degrees, so I need to use the other locking position on the AccuSlid table. Put the brass thumb screw in the 10 degree position on the L-bracket carriage to enable the slicing of the 100 degree angle cuts. Okay, I made an additional change to my sled. Uh, with this size board, it's not quite 6 inches in diameter, so the maximum angling cut in this front edge is probably about 100 and maybe 110 degrees at the most. But I want to do a 100, 120 degree cut, which is beyond the edge of the table. So what I did is I drilled two additional holes in my sled. These, these holes are one inch in from the, from the edge. 
and I drilled two holes in a half an inch in. I use that to cut this last uh, facet. So it gives me an extra half an inch. So I'm setting this to 90, 110, 120 degrees. From this angle in the video, it looks like you're going to be cutting into the base of the L-bracket carriage. But in reality, you're not. You're cutting uh, just to the edge of the wood, which is in front of the uh, L-bracket carriage. So you will not be cutting into that L-bracket base. Uh, but you want to be careful you don't push the uh, blade well past the end of the board. To cut the 120 degree angle, you need to put the brass thumb screw in the 30 degree position on the L-bracket carriage. This laser beam works nice for showing exactly where I'm cutting. It goes right down the edge of the board. Again, when using the AccuFastest system, always use the safety shields. And keep the safety shields in front of the bandsaw blade so that your hands are protected whenever you're adjusting the board. Also, for additional safety, always use the handle on the outside edge of the AccuSled to push the boards through the bandsaw blade. We'll take this off and we'll take a look at it. And I can look at the side of how I like it. I have my, on my base, I have my eight sides. They look pretty good on the base. But I think I need to take a little more off the top. I can always go back and recut. You always take more wood off, of course. You can't put it back on. But if I want to make these facets a little bit bigger, I can go back here now and, and start cutting a little bit more off. But I think I'll start here at uh, 60 degrees and cut a little bit more off to make this 80 degree cut a little bit less. It sits on the table pretty well. Plenty of stability with a 10 degree bevel or angle on the front edge. So that's right at my previous bevel. So I use my index wheel, take it in maybe 60 thousandths more. And okay, that's where the index wheel came in nice. I can put that blade right against my facet and move it in, you know, dial in exactly how far I want to move it in. First I slice off 100 thousandths on the 60 degree angle sides. Then I reposition the table and the L bracket carriage and taking another 60 thousandths off the 40 degree angle side. You can continue to slice off additional increments on any of the angle sides until you achieve the facet pattern needed for your project. Take this off and look at it. And I kept, you know, tweaking the, uh, these facets, taking off, you know, 50 to 60 thousandths at a time to uh, cut the shape I wanted. So that's the finished piece ready for a sanding. I'll take this to the disc sander. So there's the top. And then uh, also hand sanding. But it should set on this 80 degree angle like that. The drilling out of the hole for the clock mechanism is not repeated here since it was shown in the previous example. This completes part one of this video series in which I demonstrated the cutting of the facets on two of these faceted desk clocks. In part two of this video series, I'll demonstrate how I sand these facets, beginning by first sanding with a disc sander, then some hand sanding using some custom made sanding disc, and then finally using a sanding mop to finish them off. And then uh, also finishing them off by first of all coating them with bush oil and then polyurethane and then finally buffing them to get them nice and nice and shiny. In part three of, the, of this video series we'll show you all of the 15 completed faceted wood desk clocks. We'll have a picture of each of the desk clocks and then we'll put each of these desk clocks on a rotating platform so you can see all the different sizes and angles of the finished desk clock. Finally we'll give a description of each of the desk clocks, what woods were used to produce the desk clock, and what angles were used for the various facets. And again, thank you for watching this video. For additional information on the AccuSlice and AccuFacet systems, please visit our website. On our website, as well as on YouTube, there are a number of other videos which describe the AccuSlice and AccuFacet systems, their design, their installation, operation, and applications for your future projects. If you have any questions or concerns, please give us a call or send us an email. And once again, thank you for watching this video.